In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bind an FBX motion capture file to your character. So first of all, open up the character file. And this is the robot that we're going to use. And uh, he's just a free download from Turbo Squid. Okay, so we're going to bind him to our FBX motion capture file. So the first step we have to do is bring in the FBX file from our motion capture. Uh, okay, so just grab that and you can drag and drop it into the scene. Now when it's added, you'll see it come up in your outliner um, as the hips. And in this particular instance, it's up the top here. Okay, so you can press the F key at any time to focus on the selected object that you've got. The problem here is that this skeleton is at the beginning of the motion capture. So this motion capture that I've got, you can see all of the frames along the bottom. So the keyframes show up in the red. This one's actually 160 in length. So I'll just increase my number of keyframes to show all of those um, keys. And it's... The character is like wobbling on top of something and then he falls off down there. Okay, so he's not in the T pose or the bind pose at this point. So we need to modify it so that it is in that so we can then attach the model to the skeleton. So just first of all, before I do that, I'm going to move this down. Okay, so I can just move it straight down and align it with my current model, have it stand on that ground plane, then grab the robot as well and resize it. It's usually best not to resize your FBX model. It's better to resize your actual character um, because it's a mesh and if you start resizing your FBX file, you can end up with all sorts of interesting things going on. Okay, so we want to resize him so that the hips and the shoulders are basically the same as the skeleton we're about to use. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now to get the skeleton into a bind pose, I'm just going to grab this robot and move him out of the road. And then we'll start working on this fellow here. So in frame one, we're going to put him into the bind pose. We don't want to key anything or muck around with any of these keys. So as you can see, even moving him like that's going to shoot him back up there because he's standing on a box in the um, animation. Okay, so the bind pose is a T pose with straight legs and the arms out to the side, just like the robot is here. So let's just grab all of these joints and you want to rotate the model into the pose, not um, transform any of the joints whatsoever. Okay, so we go through each joint and set it into what the T pose would be like and then come back and make a few adjustments. So this shoulder here, for example, was going to be out straight. Like this. Okay, so I'll just skip ahead in the video so that you don't have to watch me uh, painfully align all this and I'll come back when it's in the T-pose. Right, so... The um, skeleton is now in a bind pose, so I'm going to bring this robot back over the top and just align it. So we can see probably needs to be... No, I actually don't want to make him bigger because that will wreck his leg joints. But what we can do now is grab hold of the joints that we want to just move out a bit like this and the shoulders are going to have to come down and out a little bit so this joint here is his shoulder pivot point this is his elbow pivot point so if we just move these down just a little bit
to try and align them and you might need to rotate as well the hands themselves this guy hasn't got any so that's not so important um, let's just check out the neck and the head now if we look at this hand here from this point of view it's not coming straight out of his arm so at that point we need to check where that might be going wrong so we could move this joint just back a little bit and this point here we want to rotate to bring his arm back there okay and the other arm is pretty much the same thing so let's just um, bring that and rotate it for his arm okay his legs let's look at his knees are probably in the wrong spot so let's just bring them up to there and that means his ankles will need to come down and this knee here could actually go back a bit um, at this point you might want to move his whole pelvis back which will modify the rest of his upper body which you could just lean forward I guess at this point um, to bring that back by just a slight rotation and possibly just adjusting that okay it's probably not that most accurate I could do but um, this is just for demonstration purpose so now he's in bind pose you don't want to click on the timeline but make sure you were in frame one when you started this so we're now going to do a, a bind okay so we select the skeleton shift select the skin now with the rigging selected up here as your shelf that you're working with we're going to go skin bind skin Okay, now you can see he's just a little bit deformed in the way that he has connected to it, but he will, his skeleton will now be um, bound. Uh, and if we just zoom out, you can see that all of the animations that were on that character are now on the robot. So just get in a bit closer and just run, just go play. Okay, so that's how to align the um, FBX motion capture file with your actual character. And as I said, it wasn't particularly accurate the way that I um, aligned all of the joints. So this was just a really quick job. Um, but to get a more smoother bind and a bit more accurate, you'll want to um, spend a bit more time lining that up. But you can still see it's not too bad. Um, you can see that the feet have actually fitted and deformed down in that point. And when he moves, he um, is still doing that sort of um, wobbling, which is fairly realistic. The bits that have deformed probably maybe too much for him is just around um, these arm bits where they joined onto the hand nodes. And so you might want to spend a bit more time binding those and getting them a little bit more accurate. Okay, and that's it.